Audio Jump. Hello everyone, I'm Harry. Welcome back to King Kunsan Classroom. Today we will continue to talk about another Lepidopteran insect, the diamondback moth. The pest control of diamondback moths has been a long-standing topic because this tiny grayish-brown moth is the most destructive insect to the cruciferous plants around the world. They damage mainly brassica plants like cabbages, broccoli, and cauliflowers. So in some places, people also call it the cabbage moth. The diamondback moth is probably of European origin, but now it has already uh, been spread to all over the world, including Europe, uh, Asia, Africa, uh, the Americas, Australia, New Zealand, and even north of Canada, uh, where people often think that uh, these kind of uh, moths cannot survive the cold winter in Canada, but every year they emerge from the south and catch up the winds and travel to the north. The adults of diamondback moths has three small black triangle bands on the wings. When the wings put together, these triangles form three creamy diamond bands on the back. This is why it is called the diamondback moth. Like all Lepidopteran pests, the diamondback moth also has four life stages, egg, larvae, pupa, and adults. Actually, the larvae do all the damages to the crops, even though the larvae are very small. They have four inch stars, each with an average development time of about four days. The larvae body is pointed to both ends and fat in the middle. The younger larvae tend to be goldish brown, but they turn darker green with black heads in later instars. And there's a pair of pro legs at the end of their body, forming a distinctive V pattern. Uh, the larvae are quite sensitive, and when you touch them on the leaves, they may spin silk thread uh, and drop down from the leaves. When they feel not threatened, uh, they may come back to the leaves through the silk threads. The crop damage of the diamondback moths is caused by the larvae. Host plants of the diamondback moths include brassica vegetable and foliage crops, uh, cruciferous weeds, and ornamental crucifers. Uh, larvae damage leaves, buds, flowers, and seed buds of uh, cultivated cruciferous plants. Although the larvae are small, they can be very numerous and cause complete removal of foliar tissue except for the leaf veins. This is damaging to young seedlings and may disrupt head formation in cabbage, broccoli, and cauliflowers. Uh, the presence of larvae in florets can result in complete rejection of produce even if the level of plant tissue removal is insignificant. When larvae are small, damage is evident as small uh, irregular holes or uh, holes like gunshots in the leaves. If larvae are numerous, they may be eat the entire leaf, leaving only the veins. When we talk about the pest control of diamondback moths, it is important to emphasize the climatic effect. Cool, windy weather reduces adult activity, and females often die before they lay all their eggs. Heavy rainfall can uh, drown small larvae and reduce numbers by more than 50%. Humid conditions within the crop following a rainfall or sprinkler irrigation can promote the spread of fatal fungal diseases throughout the diamondback moss population. Second is the pest monitoring. Pheromone traps can be used to monitor adult populations and may predict larval populations 11 to 21 days later. Place the traps along the field edge and just above the crop canopy. Uh, third is the natural enemies. Diamondback moths are affected 
by diseases, uh, parasites, and predators like uh, wasps and spiders. Although some areas do not have such condition, uh, uh, it must be said that uh, introducing the natural predators can be one of the most effective ways of both stabilizing ecosystems and managing pests. Before we talk about chemical control, there are several ways that can be useful to reduce the population and damage caused by diamondback moth. Firstly, intercropping is good for reducing diamondback moths because they are pinky that only feed on cruciferous crops and plants that uh, produce glucosinolates. Uh, so intercropping with two or more than two kinds of crops in the same field can reduce fertilization or pesticide use, making planting the most profitable and producing uh, higher quality cabbage with higher yield. Secondly, planting time can be considered because uh, diamondback moth's population is affected by seasonal factors. For example, during wet condition, the infection rate of uh, the diamondback moths is very low, so growing cruciferous crops during wet seasons can effectively reduce pesticide use. Third, uh, crop rotation is useful. Cruciferous vegetables can be rotated with uh, melon, fruits, onions, and garlic, uh, resulting in a break in the food chain of the diamondback mold uh, generations. Fourth, rainfall has been identified as a major mortality factor for young larvae. So it is not surprising that uh, cruciferous crops with uh, overhead sprinkler irrigation tend to have fewer diamondback moth larvae than drip or furrow irrigated crops. Best results were obtained with uh, daily evening uh, applications. Uh, in addition, um, maintaining clean cabbage field hygiene is a simple but important pest control method. A clean growing environment can greatly reduce the likelihood of infection. For example, before farming, uh, the soil can be plowed and exposed to the sun. So, uh, last for at least a week, this helps to clear uh, the diamondback moths and strengthen the quality of the soil. The diamondback moth is one of the world's toughest pests to chemical control because it has developed resistance to multiple insecticides. Currently, insecticide resistance has been noted in over 600 cases. For nearly 100 unique active ingredient families, including carbamates, uh, pyrethroids, spinosins, and most recently, diamides. Uh, we can choose from the following insecticides uh, to control the diamondback moths. Insecticide selection will depend on cost, environmental conditions, uh, days to harvest, availability of products, and the presence of uh, other pests and the presence of pollinating and other beneficial insects. Rotation of uh, insecticide classes is good for reducing the resistance, and the insecticide compounds are recommended when infestation pressure is very high. All right then, this is all for today. Hope this video can help you have a new understanding of the diamondback moths. If you like it, please subscribe to our channel, and if you have any more questions regarding to the diamondback moths, uh, please uh, send us a message down here below in the comment zone and King Kun Sang will try to provide you with more information regarding to the pesticide industry and pest control. King Kun Sang, focus on your harvest. Mm -hmm.